G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. This is game number five in the series between Vortex and Puppy Paw, spawning in as the English playing in the color blue, it's Puppy Paw. On the south side playing in the color red, we have got Vortex also playing as the English. This is an English mirror, we are on high view and we are in game number five of this series. Now, if you don't want to get spoiled about how this series has gone so far, I encourage you to go back and watch the very first game. Uh, so the first game, I mean, it's probably what? This is the fifth game, so five videos ago. Uh, well, technically, probably four videos ago. But uh, go back and watch that one if you haven't already uh, and, uh, and go through. Otherwise, if you're not invested, if you're just here to check out the English mirror, then by all means, let's get to it. But you're going to get spoiled. So... At this point in the series, spoiler alert, we've got Vortex, who is on one point. Puppy Paw, who's on three. This is match point right now for Puppy Paw. Incredibly important game for both of these players. Puppy Paw going to be able to win the series here if he wins this game. And by the same token, Vortex going to be able to keep himself alive a little bit longer in this series. And you might be wondering, what the heck are these guys playing for? What's so important, Drongo? Well... Guys, this is the road to Red Bull Wallalow Legacy. These guys are playing for a ticket right now, a golden ticket to Road or to Red Bull Wallalow Legacy. That's a $300,000 Age of Empires 4 tournament held in Heidelberg, held in a giant castle. And I don't know about you, but it sounds pretty cool. I, I reckon if they, if, hey, if you were giving me a golden ticket to go there, I would be happy to take it. I'd be happy as Larry because a castle sounds pretty damn awesome. But you know what else sounds awesome? An English mirror. It's been a while since we've seen one of these. I think the last time we actually saw one of these, cast your mind back to EGC TV's Golden League, the group stages, or, or yeah, I think the group stage is probably the best way to say it, in the uh, the off, was it the off meta bans or the off, yeah, I think it was the off meta banning, and basically like English just became the only civilization that people were picking, and I remember watching a Viper series where he picked English like four out of the five games, it was crazy. We saw a lot of English in the, in the, in that round uh, specifically. Uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of differences we've got here. Uh, what sets these players apart? Because one of the big factors that we have seen in this matchup has been the Abbey of Kings. And will we get to see it today? That's going to be the question because i got a feeling that we might. It makes a lot of sense in this matchup to be running Abbey of Kings just simply because the knight, it's very, very powerful, very potent. And you're able to actually heal up those knights at a tremendous rate with the Abbey of Kings. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see 2TC or even 3TC, uh, or, or rather it would be 2TC into the King's Palace being the third TC uh, from both of these players, just simply because when you're on the defensive in this matchup, it's very, very easy. You've got a lot of things working for you. You've got those extra arrows from the town center. You've got that extra damage or that extra rate of fire uh, coming out from your network of castles. And then uh, don't don't forget, you've got the longbows, baby, with all that extra range. So Look, are we going to see early aggression? Probably. Uh, but I would suspect we might even see things a little bit uh, a little bit crazier. But we'll have to wait. We'll have to see how they go about doing it. Early farms already coming down for both of these players. We can see Vortex going with the farms that he pioneered. This is the classic Vortex farms. Compare that over to Puppy Poor. And he's just running the standard farms. Nothing too crazy here for him at this point in the game. Goldmine slowly working its way up. Right now, if I had to do a percentage, I'm going I'm to try my best to, to say it. I, I would say that there's probably like a 30% chance here that we see an Abbey of Kings. Could you imagine if we saw double Abbey of Kings? Oh my god. Oh my god. Could you... Uh, oh, now I'm getting myself all worked up over here. Vortex age up coming through. It's going to be the Council Hall. Ah, damn. Damn. I, I, w I was getting myself excited. I'm like, oh my god. What if, what if they both went for Abbey of Kings? Okay. And now back over on the other side. Puppy Paw. His age up about to come through. It's going to be the... It's going to be the Abbey of Kings, I can tell. Oh, damn it. It's going to be Council Hall as well. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it, dude. I was hoping for something a little bit exciting or a little bit more exciting than the Council Hall. Not going to be the case today. Uh, we've seen a couple people actually try out the Abbey of Kings. Obviously, you guys will know Kalp. Uh, I think it's Kalp Corp. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. I should probably check with him. Uh, but uh, he loves to go there at the Abbey of Kings. We've seen him doing it for, for months, really. Uh, even before they buffed it, he was doing it. Uh, and we've also seen Demuzel actually picking it up recently. We, I saw him do it on a Mongolian Heights game. Uh, but uh, early harassment coming out already. Puppy Paul going to be looking on the defensive here. You can see he's taken quite a bit of damage here with his scout. Second scout going to be coming back. It's already lost a lot of its health. So with that, we're going to see Vortex with the priority uh, on this gold vein. That's going to mean that the scouts are just going to have to chill out for the moment. Villagers just going to have to hang back. And we actually see a couple of arrows fired off towards this. And I think that's going to force Vortex back. He's like, uh... You know what? He, he's English. Yeah, maybe I should respect that. 
but he doesn't. He doesn't respect that. He doesn't care. Double scout now coming out. Couple of the villagers going to be here as well, just looking to tee off. And you can see how annoying, how pesky he is being here. We'll tune in on on uh, on Vortex's base. You can see four villagers uh, are tapping away at this council hall. So whether we see early aggression or not, I'm not sure. A lot of wood in queue, though. There is the potential that there is just a huge amount of longbows that come out now. Five longbows queued up. That is a, that is a lot of longbows. I got to be honest with you. You know, I, I'm not that good at counting, but I know five is a lot. That's for sure. Uh, so five longbows going to be coming out at this stage in the game for Vortex. is going to be moving out across the map. We'll tune in over on the opponent's side, Puppy Paw. And remember, this this could be a very costly mistake. So for anybody who doesn't know about this mistake that... Well, I, I say mistake. It, it, it's not really a mistake. I mean, it's just a decision that can land him in hot water. Puppy Paw has put his council hall at the front of his base. Right here. And remember that you can see the rally point here. That the... The archers or the longbowmen don't come out here. You you would na you would intuitively think that the archers would pop out the back and then just walk here. Not the way for the council hall, my friend. No, they pop out the front door. They have to. It, it's part of their ceremony. It is the council hall? I, be I believe it is some sort of religious building. Uh, and the problem is that if Vortex has got a really decent mass of longbows, he comes and he stands here with his longbows, and he kills any of the longbows that pop out here despite their religious, you know, celebrations that have occurred at the front door here. Unfortunately, they lose their life. And now those longbows do begin to push forward. You can see the numbers at the moment still looking relatively good at the moment for or for Puppy Paw. He's going to be able to hold on. He's got villagers if he needs to pull them as well. But you guys can see exactly what I'm seeing now. No villagers pulled just yet at the moment for Vortex. Vortex somewhat infamous for pulling his villagers. He's got plenty of sheep back here. Only on two farms at this point in time. So still investing a lot of resources towards uh, keeping a lot of resources yet to invest them heavily. Uh, Puppy Poor on the other side though, he's got quite a lot of villagers on farms. So already with eight farms down, eight farms, seven farms down at this point in the game. So quite early, he's already got those seven farms down. So some differences between these two guys. Obviously one of them a little bit safer, one of them a little bit more aggressive. Puppy Poor. Now, he's got lots of gold in the bank. What, the question is what he looks to do with that. He's got his wheelbarrow through. No horticulture just yet. Longbow is going to be able to tee off towards that scout, managing to take it out. And with that, he's going to be running blind now. He's got no scouts, no way that he's going to be able to obtain information. He's going to have to drop his own stable or look to get another scout out of the town center, which, of course, you want to avoid at all costs. We now see an outpost coming down. Vortex scouting this one out. Remember, Vortex has got both scouts up for himself at the moment. He's looking in a good spot. He's turned this series around, really. I mean, it started off looking very scary. He was down 3-0 in the series. He managed to take a game off Puppy Paw, and now things in this early stage of this, of, of this game are looking good for him. So Vortex going to be holding on here. Losing out one of the longbows. Second one taking a little bit of damage here as well. More units coming across the map. He's going to be trying his best to link up with those. Blacksmith is out. Plus one is through. No no uh, siege engineering j just yet. Uh, but we do see that plus one is coming through. It's going to give him a little bit of extra damage here. Sounds like it might be a wolf that's in, in the mix as well. I can't see it. Uh, but numbers actually looking pretty decent here at the moment for Puppy Paw. He's definitely got the advantage. And we can see that the villager is going to have to fall back away from this outpost. Now looking to rebuild that outpost. Numbers at the moment, seven longbows compared to the ten longbows. And remember, he's got the defensive advantage of being able to reinforce here. He's going to be careful not to lose that villager. He's going to be careful not to lose that villager. I don't think he can spot it. I don't think he can spot it at all. The village is going to have to fall back from that position once again. If the outpost gets up, he's going to be really, really doing well. Uh, but uh, until that outpost gets up, it's going to be, be a bit more difficult for him. Longbow's coming in. More reinforcements on the way across the map. I wouldn't be surprised if this is just a full longbow battle. Yet to see any player look to mix in any form of uh, any form of, of, of cavalry, any form of, of men at arms at this early stage in the game. Hey, keep in mind, English in this in this matchup, you can. I, I've seen games where there's only been longbows. It's been a 25-minute feudal game with only longbows and rams that were that were made, because once the longbow mass gets too big, you can't make horsemen into it. It's it, they're just too good. They're just too damn good, and that, they beat them. But now, it looks, we'll head back towards the base. I don't know what my mouse did there. They can thank Age of Empires for for that one. So still no second or no uh, archery range getting thrown down. Villager going to be moving forward. 
trying to finish off this outpost. It's going to be able to come through. We can see the archer's going to be able to focus down. He's going to try and work towards that village. A first shot going to be coming out. Second volley, not going to be able to make it. And with that, he's going to be able to force out those archers and going to be able to establish himself over on this southern front. Outpost did go up for Puppy Paw. It looks like he's going to be thinking about an age up. He's managed to keep himself alive up until this point. An age up going to be coming through. It's going to be the King's Palace going down on the front side, but he's going to be careful. There's a nice little position in here. A lot of villagers being pulled towards this. This is definitely the right choice. Stable's going to be coming down as well. Scout going to be spotting this out. We'll take a look and see where the Vortex spots it. I think he might. He's heading around the, the edge of the map and now definitely going to be spotting it. You can see he's going to start teeing off towards those villagers. Managing to put one of them back in the outpost. Second one going to be now taken out. He's going to be careful here. He did pull a lot of these villagers, but then decided against it. I'm not sure exactly what the reason was. Ideally, you want to get this King's Palace up as quickly as possible. He's gone idle on it now. And with that, that's a terrible position. We'll take a look at Vortex. Do we have that Siege Engineering coming through? No, not just yet. Siege Engineering still yet to be researched, yet to be queued up even. Uh, but uh, now those longbowmen are going to continue working on this. You can see the King's Palace definitely struggling right now to get up. And it all just comes down to this positioning. I mean, realistically, he just could have put the King's Palace here. He could have put it on the backside. He wants to try and protect the gold. Uh, but the outpost is already doing that. So it really comes in into... Thank you. That is, that, is, that is the correct choice right there. Don't put your King's Palace on the front line where your enemy's got longbows. Just put it right there next to the town center. Exactly. That is... That, it's, it's kind of beautiful to see that happen in, in real time. Because remember, this this is not a replay. There's no pre-watching going in right here. This is a live game. I can take you guys in and, and show you. You can see the, the, the timer going up. But uh, yeah, you can, you can definitely tell that right there, you know, it was the right decision for him to do that. He's going to be able to get this King's Palace up now. And by getting the King's Palace up, he's able to get, get to the stable, get to the Knights, and force this back. But you can see that so much damage has already been done at this point. Imagine if the King's Palace had just gone up at the very beginning instead of o over here. Or if you just pulled those villages. You know, it initially it looked like he had about 20 villages on it. So a big mistake already coming out from Puppy Paw. And now plenty of villagers going to be working on this King's Palace. It's just doing so much damage in here, though. We'll take a look at the villager count. 37 versus 34. So three villagers ahead. And remember, Vortex is going to be able to click up to that next stage very shortly. Has massive control at this early stage. Starting to get that outpost coverage up as well. First outpost up in the middle. No real other outposts out for him, though. King's Palace probably going to be going down on the gold mine here for him. It's going to be very safe for him to do that. But uh, just keep in mind that in this position, though, he's going to be dealing with knights. He's going to be on the defensive. And it makes sense for him to, to try his best to be a little bit more defensive. He already spots that stable from coming or coming up. Uh, so he's going to be focused on that. But he, he's actually idling the gold right now, which means less knights going to be coming out. 172 gold at the moment. He's got two knights in queue. Uh, the other big factor that we're going to be looking to see players contest is relics. So we're going to keep an eye out for that. Both players are going to be hitting castle at roughly the same time. I say roughly the same time. You know, within the same realm here. We're not talking 20 minutes versus 40 minutes. You know, things are pretty close. Knight coming out, though. No plus one armor. Doesn't need it. Uh, he's going to be able to clean up these longbows well and truly. He's going to be trying to make his way back towards this outpost. You can see him slowly but steadily. And now just uh, a little bit confused. Goes in the opposite direction. Just tries to head towards those villagers instead. Throws down all of the uh, the resources there. And now looking to expand out. Not going to be out over on this east side. Rather, heading up towards the north. It's going to be a mill. Is he going all in at this point? What is Puppy Paw doing? Or is he going imp? Why is he moving so many villages out to food? That's going to be 28 villages on food. That's a lot of villages on food here. One villager on wood? I think, is, is he going fast imp here? I'm not kidding you. I think this could be it. Okay, moves a few villages now over to wood. When I see it, to see like when I see a, a mass migration of vills like that, it to me it almost looks like he, he's just said, "I'm just going to go straight to imp here," because he, he doesn't have the production to sustain, like um, um, he doesn't have the production to sustain this many villages on food right now. Villagers dropping off some wood. He's going to drop down another lumber camp, rebuild those ones up. Longbow up towards the north going to be coming out. So many low health villagers here. He misclicks. He misclicks. He doesn't get him. He could have got two of those easily. Unfortunately, the knight going to be able to come out, clean this bad boy up. You can see he's got lots of units around here. Outpost as well in the middle. And now Vortex is going to be thinking about much of the same. Double stable. Monastery also coming up for him. A little bit of a raid going to be able to prevent these this gathering from coming through. No villagers lost just yet. Keep in mind, no textiles coming through for him. The Gatling gun going to be able to fire off down upon these units. And with that, one of the knights goes down. Second knight going to have to fall back towards the base. Things going well. We see a second stable added though for Puppy Paw. So perhaps not quite going for that fast Imperial like I, I once dreamed of. 
Um, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, even if you go fast imp, what, like, what, what would you go for? What, what's the idea behind a fast imp, Drongo, you dickhead? You gotta start thinking about these things before you say them, mate. But, uh, in, in all seriousness, though, fast imp, I mean, we, we've seen people like Lee Nock do it. He did, did a classic strategy in Outback Octagon multiple weeks in a row. Uh, fast G, or fa fast Imperial into GG. Uh, but, uh, Vortex... Not going to be biting that one. Neither is Puppy Paw, but he's going to be moving out across the map, though. Relic's going to be the name of the game here. Going to be looking to focus down those central relics as soon as possible. Knight's out here. Sieging down the outpost in the center. No arrow slits through. No sprinkled emplacement just yet. He's going to be able to lose that. We'll take that one out nice and early. Knight, at the same time, going to be picking up a wolf. Wolf has managed to lose line of sight. And with that, Knight going to be able to run in towards his position. Bell going to be going off straight away. Our English player is going to be alerted to the fact there are units in his base. Villagers turn around with their bows and say, Hey, we're just, we're just going to... just Hey, what, what if we just kill him? What if we just kill the knight that comes to our base? Okay. All right, let's do it. And they do it. And that's what they did. And the discussion worked. Two of them died for it. But, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a valiant effort nonetheless. Outpost towards the base of Puppypaw is about to go down. We do hear relics being picked up now. It's going to be relics from his enemy, I suspect. We'll take a look and see whether we've got a monastery out just yet for him. No monastery what whatsoever. Now, relics don't play a big impact in this matchup as much as other matchups do. Just typically against the English, relics aren't a big deal because, well, they've got enclosures. Remember that. So enclosures going to be giving them plenty of gold in the late game anyway. So 80 villagers on farms is equivalent to about what? a thousand gold a minute passive so even if you've got five relics that's 500 gold a minute i mean 1500 and a thousand there's a pretty big difference between that but when you compare that you know a thousand versus zero which is what any other normal civ would have yeah it's not really that it's it's not really that impactful to deny them relics but uh obviously you'd still rather have them than not vortex now looking to defend against another raid coming in here puppy poor trying his best on that north side and definitely this English mirror shaping up with a lot of action early. We've seen the, the, the era of the longbow. And now we begin to see the era of the knights. The question is, once we get to that Imperial Age, what era do we go to? I think it's the hand cannonier era. Actually, is it hand cannonier and, and horsemen? I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to double check and see how these guys play. But we do hear that second relic now being picked up over towards that west side. Vortex got to be careful here. He runs into a couple of knights. These knights are running blind right now. You can see he's looking for the monk. He knows, he's, he knows it's out here because that relic disappears off the minimap. So a little bit of a hint for you guys while we watch these knights battle it out. So obviously you can spot the relics on the map. You can see everything on the map, right? As soon as that relic gets picked up, it disappears off the minimap immediately. So even whether you've got, even if you've got, or rather, even if you don't have eyes on it, it will still disappear off your minimap. So as, as long as you're paying attention to that and you say, oh my God, that relic just got taken then, boom, you can work out exactly where that is. And that's why we saw that split happen in that direction. He, he was moving, you know, two down here, one over here, one over there. He was looking for that monk and he found it. Up towards the north now, another raid going to be coming in. More units on the way through for Vortex. He's looking to try and take out his enemy. Looking to try and cause a bit of havoc over towards that base. It's just going to be 2TC play here. King's Palace as well as that main town center. A lot of farms coming through at this point in time for Puppy. He's transitioning slowly but steadily. Uh, but uh, it is going to be a raid that is once again repelled. We'll ride on board with Vortex and see how he's doing. Vortex, 66 villagers, 59 over for Puppy Paw. So a little bit of a villager advantage. He's done well uh, to deny out these raids as well as keep his own villagers alive. So really looking quite sharp. Four Vortex at this point in time. Population difference as well. Barely any difference between it. 15 and 12 military difference. Not a lot at all, but night numbers starting to get a little bit thicker. Vortex going to be on the defensive. Puppy Paw looking for an angle to strike at. His first relic still only captured up. We don't see the second one picked up just yet. No worry, Monks. Or no Monks, rather, moving out towards it. We'll watch and wait and see how he plays it. But we'll have a look and see whether a monastery has been dropped down for his opponent. Indeed, a monastery has now been dropped down for Puppy Paw. He said, well, you know what? If you're collecting relics, I should probably do the same. And that's exactly what he looks to do coming out towards this relic on the edge of the map on the south side. But now Knight's going to get picked up. It's going to be that classic night on night action that you love to see in that English mirror. And uh, this is part of the reason why Abbey of the, uh, of the Kings is so strong in this matchup, or just not in this matchup, but just in general, whenever you want to go for this sort of fast castle play. Now, obviously, it would have been impossible for the amount of pressure that we saw early on in this game uh, for, you know, for the the Abbey of the Kings to actually be effective here. But you can see where the value really comes through. All of these knights would, would have been healed up an effective amount. Relic still yet to get picked up over on this east side. We see the knights forcing back the knights of Puppy Paw. 
There's a lot of knights back here. We're going to do a quick knight count right now. 20 knights for Puppy Paw. Compare that over to Vortex, who's on 15. The player's looking happy and healthy. Now he's got to be careful in this base. Upgrades have come through for him on a number of fronts. He's got the plus two melee attack, plus one melee armor. But it's still not going to be able to enough to overcome that difference of numbers that you've got there up against Puppy Paw. And Puppy Paw going to be able to force him back here. Second gold vein now going to start to be taken. You can see both players moving out to their secondary sources of gold. More knights patrolling across the map. He's trying his best to hold on in the center. And the question is, where do we go from here? What's our end game? Where's our macro take us from here? Do we look for an Imperial Age? Do we look for more knights? And I think I've found my answer already. It's going to be Vortex going heavy into knights. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of people in, in you know on YouTube watching this and thinking, what? Why doesn't one of them just make spearmen? Why don't, why don't they just make spears? Well, sure, spears can work, but you got to remember, spears are a bit, they're kind of like static defense in a way. Like, obviously, they can move, but they're slow. They can be outrun very easily by the knights. They've got mobility. They maneuver very effectively. And as a result, if you go spearmen, it's going to take you a big investment to get into there. So right now, let's say, uh, let's say hypothetically Vortex wanted to go into spearmen. What's he sitting on at the moment? If we take a look, he's on 13 knights. Okay, and compare that over to Puppy Paw, who's on 24. So let's say Vortex wants to invest in knights. So during that time that he is moving into knights, Puppy Paw's knight count goes from 27 up to 32. So already the, the distance is, is growing bigger. It's growing longer. It's growing more substantial. Another TC going to be coming down here. Village is going to be going down. But in addition to that, it, it, it takes time for you to start building up that mass. You've got to get your upgrades through. You've got to get your veteran spearmen. You've got to add in more than one barracks. You've got to add in a second barracks, a third barracks, a fourth barracks, potentially. It's going to take time for you to get online. And by the time that you get online, well, your enemy started to get ahead of you. They've outmaneuvered you. They're fighting you in places that you can't fight. You're trying to catch up. And it just gets too hard. It just it, it becomes easier to just meet them with knights. Uh, but it can become difficult when your enemy starts to get a knight mass difference like this and can become worth it to actually start investing towards Spearman instead or even into a crossbow mass is something that we find very effective in these sort of mid-game fights, which is what I would expect to see players do shortly. I would expect that sooner rather than later, but we do continue to see Puppy Paw heavily investing into Knights. We'll check in and look with his production and see how he's doing. You can see right now on four stables. Compare that over to Vortex at the moment. Vortex sitting on five stables, so both players heavily committing right now. If you can make it towards your your crossbow number critical mass so i think the, the number is about 15 or 16 uh that you can w start one-shotting the knights it becomes much easier for you to take these fights but now the charge is going to start coming off vortex going to be looking to do a bit of defending here get some great charges takes out a lot of these blue knights great effective job there at the same time walls continuing to go up over on that north flank of the base he's going to be able to repel these units we'll do a quick stock take and check and see where we are at 88 villages 18 knights compare that over to puppy paw who's sitting on 85 villages and 20 knights so things looking pretty damn even at this point in time everything in this game i mean you, you know i often talk about that little bar at the top of of you know 50 50 100 0 all that like percentage chance of win you'd have to probably put vortex at about 51 and, and puppy paw at about 49 at the moment but uh aggression now coming out puppy paw looking to drop down an outpost could be thinking about a potential keep here. Probably not. Just looking to probably grab up that uh, that grab up that uh, that network of castles bonus. And now those knights are going to be coming out. They've both got their network castles. Actually, no. It's only Puppy. It's only uh, Vortex that's got it. He's going to be able to force him out here. He cannot fight into this without the network of castles. And that's where the defensive bonus for English really comes in handy. Because it means that you're unable to push in towards this on any sort of similar number. Because your enemy is just going to have that huge advantage. Now, keep in mind, speaking of advantages, third town center is up for Vortex. Village account at 91 compared to 97. So Vortex... Oh my god. Uh, Vortex is, uh, is is definitely looking healthy uh, in that regard. We'll check and see if we can spot out another town center that's come down for Puppy. It doesn't seem like it at this stage. Just going to be sticking with the two TCs. So not a big difference there. Manages to actually get the rewall up over on this position. Going to be dropping down a gate as well. He's got to be careful not to lose the villagers underneath. That More knights going to be coming in now. He's going to be looking to jump onto this stone. Knight numbers looking very healthy for Vortex here. He's going to be able to come through here with a charge of his own. Forces back a lot of these knights. You can see them trying to get their own charges on. We'll do a bit of a swing around with the camera as the knights begin to come out. But take a look here. We've got no no network of castles on 
on uh, Vortex, despite fighting right outside his base, whereas Puppy Paw has got plenty of network of castles. So will it make the difference here? That is going to be the question. It's always hard to tell in these night fights because sometimes you've got knights that are on low health. Sometimes you've got knights that are, you know, all attacking on one unit. But it looks like Puppy Paw going to be able to hold onto this position for now. You can see Vortex is going to be able to reinforce it. He's got more and more units on the way through. The same time from Puppy Paw, though, we do see more units coming across the map. He's going to have to fall back from this position. We've got the Night Wars really beginning. It is like the Crusades right now that just non-stop knights coming out for both of these players. Sacred Sites also being taken. We can see over towards the west a bit of a war between religion, it seems, as uh, as both churches of England try to uh, try to convince each other that they are the true church. Uh, but uh, they don't know the truth. They don't know the truth. The spaghetti monster is the one true god. Uh, but uh, now that... Uh, now I'm, I'm sh I've, I've just upset half of my American population, so apologies to you guys. Uh, that was a joke. That was a joke. Let's be nice to each other. Uh, <laughs> and now we'll, we'll check in and see where Vortex is at. 114 villages, 97 for Puppy Paw. So getting towards that 20 villager difference here, still not really much of a difference maker. But look at this, more stables coming down right now. We'll have a look. I want to see what the pop, what, what the uh, production is looking like. Five for Puppy Paw, uh, down towards the other side. Eight stables now coming up for Vortex. I tell you what, if you if I mean. We see a lot of matchups where there's only knights. Like, you watch France versus China, there could be only knights in that matchup very often. If the Chinese player goes for a fast castle, it will be literally knights only. Um, so that's one of the matchups. This is another one. Interestingly, neither player going into crossbows. Uh, crossbows would have been a pretty reasonable uh, decision for either of these players when you start talking about the numbers that we've got here. But I guess, once again, can you imagine the difference that an Abbey of Kings would have made in this matchup with this many knights? Can you imagine the value that you could have got out of an Abbey of Kings here? This is where Abbey of Kings starts to become less of a meme and more of a real uh, possibility. But once again, Vortex is going to be pushing out of his base. Keep in mind, pushing out of the base. Huge mistake. Network of Castle is going to be applied to his enemy here. Vortex numbers on 18 at the moment. Compare that over to his opponent who's on 21. Puppy Paw going to be looking to hold on here with that Network of Castle's bonus. An extra 25% increased attack speed. He holds on. He forces back all of these units. Things looking good, but a little bit of a raid going to be coming through on the wood line. Villagers going down. Puppy Paw, he's sitting on 101 villagers at the moment. 125 for Vortex and things shaping up even stronger right now for our Spaniard as he fights through on this game for his life. We enter the 26th minute right now and he's looking good. I'm, I'm starting to push his number up a little bit further. I'm going towards like that maybe tw maybe 56, 57 percent number right now. He, he, things are better for him. I love the fact that he's got plenty of production down as well. It means he's going to be able to spend all of those extra resources. But speaking of extra resources, he's got 2,400 wood right now dropping down. Oh my, oh my, oh my lord. All right. Well, this is what I was talking about a bit earlier. Remember how I said like, you know, the, the switch, it's going to take time. You know, it's going to be hard for you to do it. You know, there's no guarantee that it's going to work. Your enemy's going to be invested in a whole bunch of stuff. Well, it turns out... Oh god, Puppy's Imperial. <laughs> oh god, Puppy's Imperial. So with Puppy Paw reaching Imperial, this becomes a a decisive moment in this game or a pivotal moment in this game because Puppy Paw has gone the Wingard Palace and he's put it right on the front of his base. And just like with this Council Hall, the problem now is if your enemy comes up here with their army, your Wingard Palace is useless because they're actually able to camp on top of it and kill anything that comes out of it and eventually siege that down. Now, me personally, I prefer my Wingard Palaces right back here where they're nice and safe. But now we can see that Puppy Paw might be in a little bit of trouble as those knights coming out from his opponent are going to be in with a beautiful timing here. Ideally, you'd love to see more knights coming in. Where are all the knights from Puppy Paw right now? He's sitting on 27 knights, but I've got no clue where they are. There they are coming in over from the east side. We can see enclosures as well as elite knights now coming through for him. Puppy Paw going to be trying his best to hold on, managing to do so. But you can see the raids coming through over on those villagers. Village account going to continue to dwindle. He's sitting on 85 villagers, losing more and more as time goes on. 83 villagers now. He's fighting for his life Wall all the way over towards that edge of the map. So he's going to have to look towards the other direction. But more knights making his way into the base. And Vortex now starting to do that spearman switch. It is the biggest switch I've ever seen. He's got the veterancy upgrade as well. Keep in mind, he's also got plus two on everything. So he's not, he's going to be able to tank towers. He's going to be able to tank all that good stuff. But elite knights are out. But just just remember, just because they're elite, it doesn't mean they can beat spearmen. Spearmen in veteran... Veteran spears are still pretty decent against those elite knights. It's only the French 
Witch Knights that you really got to watch out for because they got the extra damage on the charge. They've got the healing up so that they can pull away and get a little bit more value there. But most importantly, they've got the Royal Bloodlines, which they've got available to them in Age 3 as a potential threat. But for the case here with Puppy Paw, it's not going to be happening for him. He's got a lot of uh, a lot of wood in the bank. A little bit of a raid coming through. Spearman going to be able to clean it up, though. Things looking good. He's managing to hold on, but now all of a sudden, Puppy Paw able to take control of the map. Village account for Puppy Paw down to 76. 143 for Vortex. He has double the military count. Could the switch actually work? The tech switch coming in strong. That is going to be the question. You can see the walls are all the way up right here. The question is, where is the hole? How did he get through? because there's a keep on that side. It, it should be fully defended. I, I'm assuming he got through the front. Maybe there was an overchop on this side. I got no idea where it is, but look at the numbers coming out right now from these spearmen. I would expect longbows are going to be coming out as a, as a response here in the, in the council hall from Puppy Paw, but we don't really see any movement on that front. He's struggling. He's on 93 population right now compared to 200 on Vortex. Oh my lord, I wasn't even paying attention right now. Vortex with the 200 pop. The giant tech swing. This could be it. This could be the tech swing or the tech switch to change the game and now down towards the south he's got another raid coming through but you remember at this point in the game 130 villagers made i don't care if i lose 10 you take them out for me thank you doing god's work over there we spoke earlier about god's work it looks like god has come to fruition over on that east side or west side rather for vortex and now attention very easily could be drawn towards that wingard palace we yet to see anything come out of it puppy poor not not yet invested any resources in it more villagers coming out the Spearman moving forward. He's trying his best to hold on. The Knight's going to be able to get off a decent charge here, but the Spearmen are in number here. They've got their plus two upgrades on absolutely everything, and he's looking good. He's looking strong. This is right now the tech switch to save the game, potentially for Vortex. Things looking really good for him. The Longbows are coming out, but the number's not looking healthy at all. Villager's going idle. Sure, he's got enclosures, but is it going to be enough? And now we enter into the cinematic mode as the Spearmen look to take control of the base. Spearmen going to be able to dive down on the ground, get their little Spearmen, out, spearmen boys out. They get their spears on the front side and just force back those elite knights. Your elite knights mean nothing to me. And this is such a beautiful switch right here. So think about the way that he did this, okay? He forces his, or doesn't force his enemy, but he encourages his enemy. He says, hey, I'm going to make lots of knights. You're going to make lots of knights. We're both going to make lots of knights. I'm going to make eight stables and I'm going to make knights only from them. And then when you go to Imperial, I'm going to build 10 barracks and I'm going to switch to 100% spearmen and I'm going to absolutely clobber you in the face. And that's exactly what he does. Now trying his best to get up this keep on the, on the backside. Looks doubtful that it's going to get up. He's got a couple of villagers back here remaining. He's going to try his best to get it up. It looks like it's going to be at a, up at about 90%. Villagers trying their best to get it up. He's trying the... the uh, the the uh, what, What's it called on the outside? I can't even remember. Jeez Louise. That's, that's going to be the long COVID settling in. Uh, but uh, four villagers managed to make it inside. Uh, I, I'm going to be thinking about that word all day. The, the things that are on the outside of a building when it's getting constructed or when it's being... Good game. Never mind. I don't even need to think about that right now. Good game. Going to get called. Puppy Paw going to be taken out. We're moving on to game number six, and we got ourselves a match, ladies and gentlemen. This was match point. There was the chance that Puppy Paw wins this. He wins the series, but no. Vortex takes back another game, and we are at 3-2 in this series. The village account, you can see the difference right there. Absolutely beautiful. The military account, oh my lord, don't get me started on it. Those spearmen coming in, beautiful timing on that switch there. Wasn't too early, wasn't too late, was it? Impeccable timing. That right there is how you do it. Fellas, I hope you've enjoyed this casted game. Game number six going to be coming up shortly for you. Don't go anywhere.